On this channel, I get angry about a great many things. I get angry about Boeing. I get angry about SLS. I get angry about Blue Origin and their lack of progress given the enormous amount of funding they have at their disposal. But nothing makes me angrier than when our elected officials make crucial and critical budgetary decisions when it comes to the future of space exploration something that they really don't have the slightest notion as to how to handle or what to fund or what's important, and yet they wield absolute authority over what gets spent on what program, and this year is no exception. On June 21st, the House Appropriations Committee released its Commerce, Justice, and Science, or CJS, spending bill, and it contains a lot of details details that really concern me when it comes to the future of Artemis, our ambitions of going to the moon to stay, and really my general confidence as to whether or not the people making these decisions really understand what going back to the moon means. Instead, they seem to be funding a program which will allow us to go to the moon, briefly orbit the moon, and return without ever actually landing on it. Does that sound absolutely ridiculous to you? Well, listen on, viewers. Hello, YouTube. I'm the Angry Astronaut, and this is... First of all, an update on the sunglasses. Thank you so much, everybody who has placed a pre-order for these things. 75% of my stock has already been pre-ordered. Only 64 pairs remained. Thank you very, very much. And if anybody still wants a pair of these, you might want to go ahead and pre-order a pair right now. It's in the description as to how to go about doing that. And for those of you who have pre-ordered, a pair of sunglasses, we will be reaching out to you by the beginning of next week to get your shipping address information. So once again, here's the latest from the collection of geniuses that make up the Appropriations Committee in the House of Representatives. In the massive budget that was put forward for 2023, it was recognized that the human landing system had been woefully underfunded, which is the whole reason that only one solution was selected for a human landing service provider. And this, of course, was Lunar Starship, not necessarily because it was was the best way to transport a mere two astronauts to the surface of the moon, but because Elon Musk offered such a ridiculously good price. Frankly, the only price that NASA could afford. Now, in this new budget, they've allocated nearly $1.5 billion for the human landing system, which may sound really good, but let's compare it to what everything else is getting. Over $2.5 billion for SLS, so a billion dollars more for a rocket that's already received over 20 billion dollars worth of funding and can't land us on the moon, by the way, and 1.3 billion actually north of that for the Orion, which also can't land us on the moon and has received enormous amounts of funding up to this point. Perhaps the venerable and highly educated members of the House Appropriations Committee need a little bit of a refresher as to how Artemis works. First of all, SLS brings the Orion plus the ICPS up to Earth orbit. The ICPS pushes the Orion the rest of the way to the moon, and then the Orion docks with the Lunar Gateway or docks with the Human Landing System in the early stages of the program, assuming that we can't get the space station in operation in time, and then the HLS takes the astronauts down to the surface of the moon and then brings them back either to the Lunar Gateway or the Orion. This means, of course, that if you don't have a human landing system, you don't go to the moon. Also, if you don't have a Lunar Gateway, you really can't go back to the moon to stay either without an orbiting base of operations, at least according to the Artemis program as it's been conceived 
received up to this point, and yet the human landing system is receiving a billion dollars less than the SLS is receiving, and also we really don't know how much has been allocated to the Lunar Gateway. But here's what we do know. The House Appropriations Committee still felt that HLS and the Gateway was getting too much funding, and perhaps SLS wasn't getting enough. So the draft bill includes $25.446 billion for NASA for fiscal year 2023, $1.4 billion or 5.8% more than what NASA got in 2022, but $527 million less than what NASA requested. And by the way, given the circumstances with inflation right now, that budgetary increase barely keeps up with inflation, so it's not much of an increase and a good chunk of that half a billion dollars shortfall needs to come out of HLS and the Lunar Gateway, a recipe for failure. Perhaps while doing their research on Artemis, the House Appropriations Committee spent too much time watching children's videos like this, which essentially only cover Artemis 1, get Orion to the moon, orbit the moon, and bring it back. And perhaps they think that that's all there is to Artemis, because given the amount of money that's being spent on HLS and the Gateway, that's all that's going to happen. Granted, Elon has almost limitless funds to support Lunar Starship and returning to the moon on the wings of SpaceX, but if Congress really wants a second alternative for HLS, which recently they said that they actually do, then how the hell is that supposed to happen when you're cutting the budget for HLS? Well, the answer to that question was put forward by the Senate, where they instructed NASA to select a second HLS provider, not fewer than two entities, to quote them directly, and to authorize a little over $10 billion for this program as a separate line item. However, the funding needs to be appropriated separately and on an annual basis. This is hardly guaranteed given the fact that NASA is going to have to request an entirely separate budget just for a second HLS provider. Why not just increase the line item for HLS by $10 billion? or by a combined $10 billion. Instead, funding is being cut for the program, and that is going to impact SpaceX and Lunar Starship. And here's my question. How much of Elon's money do we expect him to spend in order to make up for these budgetary shortfalls? It's not like he's getting along with the government very well as it is, and it's really hard to conceive how Elon's going to spend any more more of his own personal funds than he's already spent to bring Lunar Starship in for a ridiculously low price. We're talking less than $3 billion for the whole program. That simply is not realistic. He has to be spending tons of his own money in order to make this happen, and the budget may increase for this given the number of refueling flights that are required in order to get the Starship into lunar orbit, then down to the moon, back to lunar orbit and back to LEO to be refueled, as I've said a number of times in the past. But it gets worse than that. Aside from Lunar Starship, the other program that's being woefully underfunded is Lunar Gateway. Two days from now, an Electron rocket launched by Rocket Lab along with their Lunar Photon Upper Stage will deliver what's called the Cislunar Autonomous Positioning System Technology Operations and Navigations Experiment, <laughs> the capstone mission for short. It's a CubeSat that will be delivered into a near rectilinear halo orbit around the moon, and the objective is to test and verify the calculated orbital stability ability of this orbit because it's the same orbit that they're going to be using for Lunar Gateway. Now, this is a very important mission, one that I hope goes off without a hitch. But even if it does, we don't have any solid plan as to how we're going to completely fund Lunar Gateway. And it's not like this is going to be cheap, not even remotely. And it's very important to the future of Artemis that we actually 
actually have this space station. This particular orbital path gives us easy access to the entire surface of the moon, unlike the Apollo missions, which only provided efficient access to the equatorial regions, and that's about it. This orbit will provide access to the poles, which of course is very important because that's where all the lunar ice is, but on top of that, it also allows the astronauts to make multiple visits to the moon in a single mission. It also allows them to control rovers and other scientific equipment on the surface of the moon in real time from the space station. It also provides a place to evacuate to in case there are any emergencies. It also provides an isolation and quarantine environment for any missions returning from Mars in the future. It provides so many different things that will enhance our ability to maintain a long-term presence on the moon. And yet, along with HLS, Lunar Gateway is the other program that's expected to somehow make do with millions of dollars worth of cuts in 2023. And it's not like this space station has a ridiculously rich billionaire founder to support it. The power and propulsion element is being provided by Maxar, and the main habitation module, that is the Halo, is being provided by Northrop Grumman, not exactly a company that's known for coming in under budget or with very inexpensive solutions. Now, if NASA had actually had the guts to go forward with an inflatable module, the life habitation module that is provided by Sierra Space, then perhaps that company might have been willing to invest a lot of their own money in seeing their module get attached to the Lunar Gateway, given the fact that they do have billionaire founders. But, of course, NASA didn't do that, instead going with the old boys network of Northrop Grumman and the Cygnus resupply ship, which is going to be serving as the basis for the Halo module. In other words, a tiny tin can that you use to resupply the ISS is where these astronauts are going to be expected to live. And I assure you, this isn't going to be delivered cheaply by Northrop Grumman. So how the hell do we expect this job to get done with such anemic funding? Well, in my opinion, there are two possibilities here, and neither of them are good. The first is that Congress really just doesn't understand Artemis and really doesn't know what it's going to take in order to get us back to the moon successfully and to stay this time. The other possibility is they really don't give a shit. Just don't give a shit. What they do care about is continuing to pay the people who are currently building SLS and Orion all of those nice guaranteed jobs in their districts, and that's the only thing they really care about. And things get even worse than that, if you can imagine. On top of all of the budget cuts that have already been taken, one thing that's really being cut out in a big way, and this could be disastrous to the future of our civilization is the Near-Earth Object Surveyor Mission, a space telescope dedicated to the detection and characterization of comets and asteroids that could pose a danger to the Earth. In fiscal year of 2022, Congress appropriated $143 million for this project, with a projected launch date of 2026. And by the way, this launch date is already eight years late given the launch date that was supposed to happen for the Sentinel Space Telescope, which was the previous version of this particular project. We've already delayed protecting our planet from near-Earth objects by almost a decade, and with these budgetary cuts, it's going to get even worse. By the way, linked in the description is a form letter from the Planetary Society that you can send to Congress letting them know just how dangerous damn dangerous this whole situation is. So, as usual, Congress once again just doesn't get it when it comes to space. It is up to us, as citizens of this planet and the people who vote for these idiots in the first place, to let them know just how important these issues are and how much they're being neglected by our elected officials. If you are an American citizen, I have a link in the description that will allow you to contact your congressman. And if you aren't an American citizen, I 
have another link allowing you to contact the president. Either way, I think that we finally need to have a call to action notifying our government that ignoring and neglecting space is a recipe for disaster. Screwing up Artemis and seeding the moon to the People's Republic of China is a recipe for disaster. Ignoring near-Earth objects until one of them collide with us, creating a catastrophe, is obviously a recipe for disaster, and we need to let them know about it in no uncertain terms. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space!